part um, that we're going through, like where the unit circle comes from, um, you won't be tested on this specifically. I'm just showing you where it comes from, okay, so that it makes sense. But I will not test you on this part specifically. That doesn't mean you can tune me out. That just it, This is just like a four-year information, okay? Um, special right triangles you should maybe have learned about in Math 2. I don't know if this is going to feel familiar or not. So special right triangles, we have this side would be A, this side would be A, and the hypotenuse would be A root 2. That's the relationship between them. So these two sides would be exactly the same length, and then that side would be A root 2. And that's if this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So it's an isosceles triangle. 45, 45, 90, the two legs are the same length, the hypotenuse is A root 2. And then if you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, 30, 60, 90 triangle, then the smallest side is A, the middle length side is A root 3, and the longest side is 2A. And when we define everything in the unit circle, we call it a unit circle, unit meaning one, like a length of one. We call it a unit circle because it has a radius. This is the radius. It has a radius of one. That's why we call it a unit circle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a triangle. So this is going to be the hypotenuse of the triangle. We're going to drop a line straight down here from here to this other side and create a 90 degree angle right there. And we're going to say that this is a point on the edge of the circle. And that point is going to have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are not going to be a length of 1. You can see the radius is a length of 1. But this down here, this would be the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is obviously going to be less than a length of 1. The height of the triangle, the y-coordinate, is also going to be less than a length of 1. Does that make sense? Okay. So this side is the x value, how far the point goes to the right. This side over here is the y value, that's how far the side goes up. And then that's where we're going to get the x and the y coordinate from for that point. Now this right here, if you were able to get like a protractor out, compass, protractor, I always get those mixed up. Which one measures the degrees? Protractor? Okay. So if you were to get a protractor out and measure it, this would be 30 degrees right here which would make this right here 60 degrees. So if we use this and compare it up here, that means that the radius is comparable to the 2A side. Would you guys agree with that? The radius is comparable to the 2A side. So I'm going to say that the length of 1 is comparable to the 2A side. So if I wanted to solve for A, what would I get? 0.5, or if I wanted to keep it in fractions, what would I get? One half. One half. So I'll go ahead and solve, divide by 2, divide by 2. I get A equals 1 half. Okay. So the Y is comparable to which side? The A side. So if A is 1 half and the Y is comparable to the A side, then I'm just going to say Y is 1 half. And then that makes x comparable to the a root 3 side. And so that means that x is going to be 1 half multiplied by root 3. So I'm going to say that a root 3 side is going to be 1 half multiplied by root 3. And if we were to multiply these together and write our answer as a fraction, does anyone know what the fraction would be? You can't use your calculator because your calculator is going to give you decimals, not a fraction. This right now is considered to be like a whole number. What should we put it over if we want to write it as a fraction? 
we put it over 1 if we want to write it as a fraction. And then when we multiply fractions, what do we actually multiply? We go straight across. So 1 multiplied by root 3 would be root 3. And 2 multiplied by 1 would be 2. So the a root 3 side would just be root 3 over 2. So for this triangle right here that we have in the unit circle, the length across that horizontal distance is root 3 over 2. That vertical distance or the height is 1 half. So the x coordinate would be root 3 over 2. The y coordinate would be 1 half. Okay, how do you guys feel about that so far? Can you see how I used the triangle to find those missing side lengths? Okay, you don't have to do it again on your own. We did it once, now we just know that forever, that that's the side lengths. We know that they came from this triangle. Okay, I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm gonna grab my unit circle paper. So this right here, this is the measurement of 30 degrees. So I'm going to put 30 degrees right here. The right amount, so it went to the right root 3 over 2, it went up 1 half. So I'm going to say right root 3 over 2, up 1 half. Now the unit circle doesn't just go in, this is like the first quadrant, so positives to the right and up. It also has 30 degree angles going this way. So we have like zero degrees is right here, but if you make a straight line, how many degrees would be over here? What's a straight line? 180, so this would be 180. And if you went up 30 degrees from 180, what's up 30 degrees from 180? Wait, what's up one what up 30 degrees from 180? 150. So it'd be 30 degrees less. So that'd be 150. So if we were to make a triangle here, we'd be going left the x amount and up the y amount. So if we went left, would it be positive or negative? Negative. So we're going to say negative root 3 over 2 and then up 1 half. Okay, and then for this next one, this is 30 degrees again, but it's down from 180. So what's 30 degrees more than 180? 210, so we're going to say 210 degrees here. And we went left the X amount and down the Y amount. So it's negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Okay, now over here we went from 0 to 180 and then we went another 90 degrees. What would this number be if we went another 90 degrees? 270, okay. And how many degrees is it if you go a full circle? 360, okay. All right, so if we look at this one, this one would be 30 degrees less than a full circle. 330. Okay. So for this one, we went to the right the amount of x and down the amount of y. To the right the amount of x, down the amount of y. So what should I be putting? Root 3 over 2 and negative 1 over 2. Okay. So we've got some values on the unit circle. Uh, we could also put the degree measure right here. What would this be? 90. Okay. So we have this is a 90 degree angle. Another 90 degrees makes a straight line for 180. Another 90 degrees makes 270. And then another 90 degrees makes a full circle at 360. Okay. Are we comfortable so far? Numbers make sense? Any questions I can answer? We're okay? Okay. Let's go back to our triangle. So here, we're going to go up here, and we're going to drop a line straight down. Okay. 
We're gonna make a 90 degree corner there. The radius is one. And this time, this is a 60 degree angle, which would make this a 30 degree angle. Again, we're gonna label this point. It's gonna have an X coordinate. It's gonna have a Y coordinate at that point. Again, the radius with a unit of one is corresponding to this triangle up here. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And again, the radius of one corresponds to the hypotenuse, which is the 2A side. So again, we're gonna say one equals 2A. So again, we're gonna say A equals 1 half. Just like before, it's the exact same triangle that we had in the previous picture. It's just oriented differently. So this is the X side and this is the Y side. So if we compare this to the previous triangle, what is the length of X going to be? One half. And what is the length of Y going to be? Root three over two. Okay, so my x coordinate is one half, my y coordinate is root three over two. Okay, so let's go back to our unit circle. So from zero up 60 degrees is this one right up here, kind of at the top. We go to the right one half and we go up root three over two and we write our coordinates. To the right one half, up root three over two. Okay, uh, here's 180. If we go backwards 60 degrees, what measurement is here? You're close. Did you say 110? 120, 120, sorry, I thought you said 110. Okay, so here we're gonna go left and up. So what would the coordinate be? Negative one half and root three over two, okay? All right, and then here from 180, we're gonna go 60 degrees. 240. Okay, we're gonna go left and down. Okay. And then from 360, we are backwards 60 degrees. 300, and we went to the right and we went down. Okay, so one thing that might be helpful is to write down what the signs are for each quadrant. So positive X, positive Y for quadrant one. We go left and up for quadrant two, so negative for x, positive y for quadrant two. Quadrant three is left and down, so negative for x, negative for y. And then quadrant four is to the right and down, so positive for x, negative for y. So that can be beneficial in helping to make sure that your signs are correct. Okay, are there any questions that we have? Anything that doesn't make sense? Say it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna go back to the triangle sheet and flip it over. So this one is right in the middle. So we're gonna, we're gonna drop a line just like we did before. This one's right in the middle, so this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. 
Again, the radius is a length of one. We're still talking about a unit circle. And if you compare this to the special right triangle that's on the front, the radius of one is comparable to the A root two side. It's comparable to the hypotenuse, which is the A root two side. So I'm gonna say one equals A root two. One equals A root two. And how do I solve for A? Divide by root two. So A equals one over the square root of two. And if we were in a college class, they actually leave it like this. They leave a square root on the bottom. Uh, but we are not in a college class. And if you guys remember back to math two, we can't leave a square root on the bottom. Anyone remember how we fix it? We have to multiply it by something. by root two over root two. This is called rationalizing. So you're not allowed, if you're being proper with your math, if you're being like formal about it, um, you cannot leave a square root on the bottom of a fraction. So if you're being laid back and informal like they are later and where they don't really care, you can leave the square root on the bottom of a fraction. If you're being proper, then they care and you can't do that. So what I've realized um, in my years of teaching AP math classes is that um, like if you were taking AP calculus and you were doing a free response question, they don't care leave the square root on the bottom, it's not a big deal. But in their multiple choice questions, they're always going to fix it because the multiple choice questions have proper answers. So it's always good to know how to do it so that you can recognize answers that are written absolutely correctly, but it's also okay to have mathematically accurate answers that might be in like slang notation. So leaving it as one over root two would be the equivalent of like mathematical slang where it's correct, it's just not proper. Does that make sense? It still equals the same thing, it's just not proper. Okay, so we're gonna go through and fix it, and if we multiply the two numbers on the top, what do we get? Root two. Root two. And if we multiply the two numbers on the bottom, what do we get? Two. We get two, we get the square root of four, which is two. Okay, so we see that A, is root two over two. And if you look back at that special right triangle, the two other sides are both just whatever the measurement for A is. So in this one, our X and our Y values, here and here, if we were to put a point right here and say that this is the length of X, this is the length of y, if we're gonna write a coordinate for that point, an x coordinate and a y coordinate for that point, the length of x and the length of y are both the measurement for a, and they're going to be root two over two. They're going to be the same because this is an isosceles triangle. So root two over two for the x coordinate, root two over two for the y coordinate. Okay, so let's go back to our unit circle. So 45 degrees would be our first quadrant degree measure. We went to the right root two over two, we went up root two over two. Over here, you could think of 90 plus 45 degrees, or you could think of 180 minus 45 degrees. 135. Okay, so we went left and up, and what do we get? Negative root two over two, positive root two over two, yep. Okay, we can think of 40, uh, 180 plus 45, or we can think of 270 minus 45. 225. Okay, so we went left and down. So negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. Three. 
315 is the next one. Okay. We went to the right, we went down. So right, root 2 over 2, down, root 2 over 2. Okay. All right, we have all the degree measures filled in. Uh, we have some coordinates that are missing. So the coordinates that are on the quadrant lines. So right here, this is a radius of one. This is a length of one. So what should this point be? One, zero. Went to the right one, didn't go up or down. This one is a radius of one. So what should this point be? Zero, one. Okay, this is a radius of 1, so what should this point be? Negative 1, 0, okay. This is a radius of 1, so what should this point be? 0, negative 1, okay. All right, how do you guys feel about the numbers that we've filled in so far? We're feeling okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and we're gonna start doing radians. Um, so here's what we're gonna write at the top of our paper. So we're gonna say um, zero degrees equals zero radians. One hundred and eighty degrees equals pi radians, and three hundred sixty degrees equals two pi radians. So degrees are typically written um, in terms of numbers with a bubble on the end, uh, and they're bigger numbers. So they would be, you know, 60, 55, 178, something like that. Radians typically have a pi in them, although not always, and they are generally written in fact or not factor, they're generally written as fractions because they are between zero and two, most often written between zero and two. So degrees have a bubble, they're bigger numbers, radians are fractions, um, typically with a pi, although not always with a pi. Uh, for a number to be a degree, it has to have the bubble. If it doesn't have the bubble, it is automatically assumed to be a radian. So if you write 214 and you don't have a bubble, I'm going to assume it's a radian and that it's just a huge radian measure. Does that make sense? If it doesn't have a bubble, it is automatically a radian. The reason for that, boys in the back, are you listening? I'm about to put you at four separate tables. That is how much the little bit of chatter this entire period has bugged me. You got it? Okay. Uh, the reason that the bubble is important is because radians are the default. If you were to clear your calculator memory, your calculator goes default into radian mode. Uh, when we get into calculus, if you choose to take calculus, they don't use degrees anymore. They only use radians. Degrees like cease to exist. Uh, when you do something called derivatives in calculus, which, which is like what all of calculus is based off of, it's actually in terms of radians, and everything that you learn is based on radians, and people actually don't even know what the degree um, answers are because you literally don't learn degrees. You only learn radians. So radians are the default, which means that if you're doing something that is not the default, you have to do extra notation. Does that make sense? That means that if we're doing an answer and you put it in degrees, it better have a bubble or I'm marking you down. Make sense? Okay. Uh, because radians are the default. All right. So over here, we're going to put zero radians. And over here, we're going to put pi radians. And down here, we're going to put two pi radians. And what students hate about radians is that you have to be decent with your fractions. Oh my gosh, sorry, 2 pi, I was not thinking. Thank you for catching that. 
2 pi over here. I would have caught it. I just would have caught it later. And I would have thought it was crazy. Okay. All right. For your first color, you are going to draw a line down the y-axis and down the x-axis. You're going to draw a line down the y-axis and down the x-axis. Okay, so if I cover up the bottom of the circle, you can see that this is one whole of a pie. Everyone see that's a whole pie? So how many pieces did I break it into? Wait, wait. How many pieces did I break it into with, the, with my color in my um, marker? I broke it into two pieces, okay? So if I had a hole and I broke it into two pieces, what would that be in fractions? That would be a half. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to count in halves and we're going to write down the radians as we go. So we have zero radians. We have one half pi radians. So I'm going to say pi halves. So zero, one half. This is two halves, which is the same as one. Everyone agree with that? Two halves is the same as one. Okay, down here we have three halves, three pi halves, and then over here we have four pi halves. Do you agree that four pi halves is the same as two? Okay. Now we could actually keep going. We could find that this is five pi halves. Everyone see how we could keep going and find five pi halves? If you keep going, you find something called a coterminal angle. It's an angle that's in the same spot. So an example of coterminal angles are zero degrees and 360 degrees. Do you see how they're in the same spot? That's what coterminal angles are. So zero degrees and 360 degrees. So if I said zero, one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, then I would say pi halves and five pi halves are coterminal angles because they're in the same spot. Does that make sense? They're in the same spot, okay? Um, another pair of coterminal angles, I could say that three pi halves and negative pi halves are coterminal. Anyone want to explain how I called this negative pi halves? Somebody other than Carly? Sorry, Carly. Yeah. Yeah, if I went backwards. So this way, it's three pi halves. Or if I go backwards, then it would be pi halves going, negative pi halves going backwards. Does that make sense? OK. We're going to grab another color. And for this color, we're going to do those 45 degree angles right in the middle. Oop, my line was not very straight. Pretend that my line's perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna cover up the bottom. I'm gonna look at the top, and I'm gonna look at all of my marker. So all of my marker lines, if this is one hole, and I look at all of my marker lines, how many pieces did I break it up into? Four. Okay, so I'm going to count by fourths this time. All right, so this is one fourth. So I'm going to write pi fourths. This is two fourths. Is that the same thing as one half? Two fourths is the same thing as one half. This is three fourths. Uh, four fourths over here. Do you guys agree that four fourths is the same thing as one? Okay, then down here we have five fourths. Down here we have six fourths. Do you guys agree that six fourths is the same thing as three halves? 
okay? Over here we have 7 fourths. And last, we have 8 fourths. Do you guys agree that 8 fourths is the same thing as 2? Okay. All right, we're going to grab one last color, and the last color is going to do all of your lines that you have remaining. Okay, so I did my fourths in purple, and for this one, I'm gonna ignore the purple, I'm gonna pretend that it's not there, okay? So I'm using my green and my pink. I need you to look at your unit circle and figure out what colors you're using. So I'm ignoring my purple, I'm using my green and my pink, and I'm gonna figure out how many sections there are if I ignore the purple. So there are six sections. Does everyone see how there are six? Okay, so we're gonna count with six this time and we're gonna have to simplify a lot of fractions as we go, okay? So the first one is one sixth, so I'm gonna put pi over sixth here. The second one is what? Two sixths, which is one third, okay? And then we have three over six, which is one half. That fits what we already marked. And then we have four over six, which is two thirds. And then we have five over six. And then we have six over six, which is one. So that matches what we already wrote. And then we have seven over six. And then we have eight over six, which is fourth over three, yep. And then we have nine over six, which is three over two, that matches what we already have. And then we have 10 over six, which is five thirds. And then we have 11 over six. And then last, we have 12 over six, which is two pi. Okay. So those are all of the radians. So over here, I could say that this is 11, sorry, I could say this is one pi six, or I could say this is 13 pi 6. That would be the coterminal angle. Everyone see how I got 13 pi 6? Okay. I could say this is pi thirds, or I could say this is 7 pi thirds. Everyone see how I got 7 pi thirds? 6 pi thirds, 7 pi thirds. Okay. Um, I could say that this over here is pi, or I could say that this is three pi. Does that make sense? Three pi, okay. So what we're gonna write down here is we're gonna say with coterminal angles, Coterminal angles are degrees. If it's in degrees, it is plus or minus a full circle. If the original angle is measured in degrees, it is plus or minus a full circle. Zero degrees and 360 degrees are coterminal. If it is in radians, it is plus or minus a full circle. Pi 6 and 13, yeah, 13 pi 6 are coterminal. 
So degrees plus or minus a full circle, radians plus or minus a full circle. So let's practice a couple of those just to make sure that we can do them. Um, and I'm going to do it with a calculator because my brain is starting to hurt. So if I wanted to find a coterminal angle with 360, sorry, with 50 degrees, I could do 50 degrees plus 360, that would give me one coterminal angle. I could do 50 minus 360, that would give me another coterminal angle. A positive coterminal angle, a negative coterminal angle. And if you want to see it visually, 50 degrees is like right here ish. You could say add a full circle, I'd be about right here. And you could say subtract a full circle, I'd be about right here. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, if I had a radian measurement, let's say I had five thirds, I would type five thirds and I could add a full circle. 11 pi thirds would be coterminal. Does that make sense? Or I could do 5 thirds, subtract a full circle, and negative 1 third would also be coterminal because I subtracted a full circle, so it would be in the same spot. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, if we're converting back and forth between radians and degrees, Maybe I'll leave that for a second. Hold on. I just want to make sure that you guys have some background information. I think I'm just going to leave it with this. So we've drawn the unit circle. We've learned a little bit about coterminal angles. Do you think if you had to find coterminal angles for homework tonight that you could find them? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a sheet, and I'm just going to explain what homework is. You're going to have 1 through 20, and on 1 through 20, you're going to find one positive coterminal angle and one negative coterminal angle. And to find the positive or negative, you're just going to add 360 until you get a positive answer or subtract 360 until you get a negative answer. Add two until you get a positive answer. Subtract two until you get a positive answer. You do it without the pi because as soon as you type a pi in your calculator, you're going to get decimals. Okay. Now remember, Desmos can do this if you don't have a graphing calculator at home. And when you are typing in Desmos, uh, if you look to the left, there's a little fraction thing where you can convert your numbers into fractions. Okay. So Desmos will handle the fractions for you. On the back, there's a blank unit circle, and I want you to fill it out. Okay? Blank unit circle, you're just going to be copying your unit circle over to this. That's also part of your homework. Okay? All right.